Oh, man, not again. Look, y'all, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I haven't made a video in like five days. I'm hyped. I'm, I'm excited. There's no better time than today to seek the Lord, to put your faith in him, to put your trust in him, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody's going to get to the Father except through Jesus. Look, there's no better day than today to watch a testimony, especially a testimony about Judgment Day. So this video that we're about to watch, this video was posted seven years ago. It, it, it Millions and millions of people have seen this video. I don't know. Maybe you've seen it. Maybe you haven't. I've never seen it personally, but millions of people around the world have seen this video, apparently have been impacted by it, apparently have been saved because of this testimony. And I'm curious. I want to see what's up. I want to see what's up. This the title is of this video. It says urgent warning. God showed this man judgment day. And look, you never know when Jesus is going to return. Yes, we can see the signs. You know, there's certain things. There, there are certain prophecies that have to be fulfilled before he can return. But regardless, you better make sure you and your people are right with God, because when he cracks that sky open, you better be prepared. You better have your faith in Jesus. All right. But before we get into this video, I just want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. Man, y'all are crazy. Y'all are so crazy. Y'all are so crazy. Me and Elliot, we put this project out that he is podcast. We released it five, five days ago. I was tripping. I was stressing because, you know. I just, I, these, these conversations, I don't know how some people are going to take it. And for the most part, it's been very, very positive feedback. I would say like 97%, 98% positive feedback. And even the people who have given negative feedback, it's all good. I want y'all to be honest either way. I don't want just, you know, sunshine and rainbows. If we acting crazy, if we saying something crazy, go ahead and, and correct us. Go ahead and rebuke us. That's fine with me. I just want the truth and I want y'all to be led to God. All right. And that's why we made this project. But for those of you who have not watched the podcast, the first three episodes are out right now on the He Is YouTube channel. Yes, I know they're two hours long and some of y'all might not have time to watch an entire two hour podcast. So if y'all kind of want like a sample, a feel for what the podcast is, we do have an Instagram channel. Uh, I mean, not channel. We have an Instagram page that literally has 50 clips. So if y'all want to just go and watch some clips to kind of get a feel for what it is, see if you like it, I mean, you know, it's not going to be for everybody. It's not going to be for some of y'all are, are going to love the podcast. Some of y'all are going to hate it. It is what it is. It's not going to be for everybody. But there is an Instagram page if y'all want to watch clips. There's also a TikTok page if y'all want to watch clips as well. I'll link everything down below in the description. Also, I don't know if I said this or not. Um, when we the, the when we put the podcast out like five days ago, it was literally on the the top ten international charts on Apple. The day after we released it, that's truly incredible. It's truly insane, and I just want to thank y'all for all the support. Um, and we're gonna keep going hard. We're gonna we're gonna keep posting um, content to help you draw closer to God and hopefully reach new people and help them get saved as well, all right? But anyway, let's get back to it. Urgent warning. God showed this man judgment day, all right? Let's get into it. I'm already, I'm already hooked. I'm already hooked. I'm already hooked. Let me run that back. Can you imagine? Life beyond what you have seen. October 2nd, the most traumatizing and awakening day of my life. An out of body experience. Me and Rob will be married three years in this October. And in those three years, God has really been growing him. And the way he has been dealing with him has been very peculiar. Mm. I mean, the dreams that he brings to him, 
you you only know that it's from God because man couldn't think of these things. Mm. I mean, and he backs it up with his word. So the dream that you are about to hear is really a testimony from God. Wow. And I suggest when you watch this, you not only just watch it and feel that it's something to entertain you. Wow. But you evaluate yourself wow and you make sure your house is in order for when God comes because no man knows the day or the hour bro i literally just said that yo she said don't be entertained by this make sure you and your house your people are in order because you do not know when god is going to return and you don't want to be you know left out to be sizzling Because I had to do the same thing. Mm. October 2nd, 2014. Isn't that crazy? 2014. 2004. That's, what is that? I can't do math. Like nine years? That's almost a decade ago. I know for some of y'all, 2014, it literally feels like it was like a couple years ago. That's almost a decade ago. We are getting old, y'all. That is crazy. Wow. I remember it was on a Thursday. Matter of fact, let's take it back. Wednesday night, I found myself looking at these different YouTube clips and watching different out-of-body experiences and different films that, you know, they used to scare me. You know? And I would watch it and it would blow me away. It would catch my attention. And it used to scare me so bad that I would, I would wonder, I, I would... My mind used to go in places like, God, is this stuff real? You know, I couldn't understand it because I, I've never been to that place. So um, I found myself um, praying. I, I remember walking outside of, of my apartment and I was walking back and forth with my eyes closed and just started praying. And I asked God, I said, Lord, if you give me an out of body experience, you know, I, I vow to share your word and to tell the people what I saw. You know, um, not expecting that God was going to respond back to that because I was just praying out. I was just praying, you know, uh, not actually looking for a response. And after that night, the next morning, that Thursday, October the 2nd, I had a dream. Mm. And my spirit left my body. It was like I was in my... You know what's crazy? I don't know. I've only had maybe like... Maybe a few, maybe like two, like legitimate visions and dreams from God. Like maybe two, maybe three legitimate ones to where it's like, I know that's from God. And that's not just my own, you know, conscious, just creating a dream. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know these are from God, maybe two. But every time that has happened, tell me why. I wasn't in my bed. I wasn't sleeping in my bed. I was literally on the couch. It's something about sleeping on the couch. So when I see this dude sleeping on the couch, getting dreams and visions and visions from God, I can relate because it's something about the couch sleep. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But if if y'all, if you know, you know, if you know. But you know, it's crazy. Also, I had a couple moments where I would get these dreams. And you know, what's crazy. It's always when <clears throat> it's always when you're really going deep in in the, in the Bible and going deep in prayer and going deep in scripture, the devil attacks you in your dreams. The same thing, <laughs> the devil would attack me when I fell asleep on the couch. I don't know. It's just, y'all probably don't care about that, but I saw the couch and that made me re uh, remember that. Anyway, let's continue. My apartment and my spirit got pulled out of my body and I would go in these different transits, um, bright color lights. It was white. She's like, the best way I can explain it would be shoo, 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 all the different flashing lights. And I appeared before a blue sky with no clouds. Uh, it was like a blue place. No land, no trees, no grass, no water, nothing. There was nothing there but a blue atmosphere. And I would see this atmosphere goes millions of miles upon millions of miles where nothing existed. It was like nothing was hidden. Everything was revealed. Everything was before your eyes, you could see it. And we was in this clear kind of body form, some form of light as a, you would refer to a soul or a spirit or, or and, and I, 
could see through, it was so transparent. And in front of me was thousands among thousands similar to what I was and thousands among thousands behind me. And, and I knew that it was some form of a soul. And in the middle of my chest were seeds, you know, multiple seeds. I didn't know what they were for. And I realized that I was the only being that could actually move out of my place and look and observe, smell, taste, you know, feel. All my senses were active at this point. And so, you know, um, I began to look around and, and, and to observe the things that I saw, not knowing that this was a dream. I thought this was reality. I thought this was actually happening, you know. Um, and I looked forward and there was this great shadow way in front of me, way at the end of the line, it was like thousands and thousands of people in front of me, and there was a shadow, a great big shadow, but it had no detail. Mm. It was like a, as a vapor. And I could, I could see that it was a shadow of something that was in the front. And, um, I, you know, I had many questions at this point in this dream, and out of nowhere, I, I, hear, I heard these words, depart from me, and this galaxy, this portal, I don't know what to call it. On the on on the right side of of God, you know, uh, or Jesus Christ, you know, whoever you you decide to identify that spot of judgment. On the right side of him, there was this big portal that opened up, and there will be stones of fire. It, normally, when you, you 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 get a lighter and you cut it on, try to um, spark a flame, but instead of fire, it was stones. And they will leak out of this portal. And whoever whoever that guy said the puff me flew down this place. Mm. And it the flame, the, the stones were so hot that it would burn everybody outside of that portal. On the left side of our, our body or our form, it would burn us. And it would, everybody would be like, ooh. Like as if it was so cold or so hot, you would tell somebody to close that door. It's too cold. That's how hot it was. And the the portal closed. And then the, he, he sent them so fast that the screams were late. Mm. I was like, ah! Yo, that just gave me the chills. He said he sent them so fast to hell that the screams were late. Hold on, let me run that back real quick. was so hot that it would burn everybody outside of that portal on the left side of our, our body or our form it would burn us and it would, everybody would be like ooh like as if it was so cold or so hot you would tell somebody to close that door it's too cold that's how hot it was and the the portal closed and then the he, he sent them so fast that the screams were late mm. I would hear ah like it was like the part for me and it closed up. Wow. Then the screams come. Ah! And it terrified me. And then out of nowhere, something snatched us up. And like we moved up the line. And I began to think, I, I didn't understand where we was. I'm like, oh my God, maybe this is judgment. Yeah, my, you know, I had many questions and I would hear, depart me. Depart me. Depart me. And all these different people will be sent to hell. And the part that scared me the most was the people that were getting judged, you could hear when God was talking to them. And you could hear everything they got judged from. So if somebody went to hell for something that you knew you struggled with in your life, you knew where you were going. And so I'm just saying people go, shoot, sit there, boo, boo. But I'm seeing the flame and it's just constantly burning everybody outside that haven't been judged yet. And I could hear some of the people um, talking to God. And um, I remember there was a woman, you know, blonde hair. And God was talking to her. He said, I'm not judging you for what you put on Facebook. But I'm judging you on how everybody else received it. Mm. 300,000 people were led astray by one of her Facebook posts. Dang. And he said their blood was on her hands. And I don't know what he said, the ball for me. And I'm talking about, I couldn't express how powerful his words were. 
It's as if he said the part of me and everything shook. And she like she was sitting with great force. And the portal opened up. Boom. She was going to fly. And it was close. And like, ah! And the screams were so late. It terrified me. People, uh, adultery, uh, 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 fornication, uh, so many different things that I could actually hear. And people in front of me were terrified because a, a lot of those people were struggling or went through the same situation and they never repented. So I, thousand, one thousand, sent here, sent here. They would go, they were flying, my door was flying so fast. I've never seen something so fast. And it got to the point where I was next in line. And he called me up. And he started talking to me. And keep in mind that our life held, held us hand to hand. So anything we did in our life, our, our life testified against us. So you couldn't lie because your life testified. Say, yes, you did. You did this. You did this at this time. Yes, you did. And whenever God would speak to me, you would see a big screen. Like you would see as if whatever God says, it comes to life. And so um, he started talking to me and he started telling me everything that I could have did better. And and at this point, you know, I'm like, okay, God, you know, I could do this better. I did it. You know, I did okay with it. But I could have did better. So he began to say other things and he brought up this specific woman. And he asked me, why didn't I forgive her? Mm. And he gave me her specific name. I'm not going to say it. He gave me her specific name. And I knew exactly what he was talking about. He asked me, why didn't I forgive her? I said, I did, God. I did forgive her. He said, well, uh, if you forgave her, when you get on the phone and talk to her, why is it that you treat her like the situation happened all over again? And... I'm like, God, but I, I did forgive her. He said, well, if you forgave her, why are those seeds still in your chest? And I looked down. I was like, oh, my God. That's what those are for. Those are seeds of what I did in my life, the things I didn't forgive. So he was talking to me, and I was like, oh, my God. And he told me. He looked at me and said, because you didn't forgive her, I didn't forgive you some of your seeds. And I was like, oh, my God. And he started telling me so many other things, and he ain't told me not one good thing yet. And at this point, I'm getting terrified because my mind is starting now going to a place where I'm imagining how hot this this fire is going to be when this portal open. And so, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I, I didn't know how to explain how terrified I was. I, words can describe when you meet God. Faith. Words can describe how terrifying it is to look your Creator face to face. Where there, there's nothing hid from him. There's nothing. Your inner thoughts are revealed before him. Your, your how, your, your perception, how you feel, everything that host you hosted in this body is presented before him. And so, you know, he, I got to a point where I, I just, I like, I didn't want to hear God no more. I was really turning my head because mm. I was afraid that, you know, it's already made his mind up. <laughs> I was so afraid, and so I turned my head and. He would just come to tell me everything that I didn't do right or, or I, could, should, I should have did better. And at this point, I knew I was going to hell. I knew it. I, I, I was fully persuaded that this was it. So I turned my head and I was like, I don't want to hurt no more. But you know, my mind, I'm just, I'm just, I don't, I don't hear. I'm just really trying to imagine how hot hell is going to be. I'm like, oh my God, Lord, I have no more chance. If I go down there, I can't come back. Like, Lord, please don't send me to hell. Please, like, God, please. I'm begging you. And I'm, I, I'm more terrified. Ter I was more terrified than I can express. And so I turned my head, and, and at this point, I no longer wanted to hear what he had to say because I knew at this point, you know, I, I was going to hell. And I would have my head turned, and out of nowhere, there was this warm feeling that would come over the, the interface of my soul. And... I would turn my head, and it would go in slow motion, and the tears would fly from my face. And I looked at God, and I was looking at his, his judgment, what, what, what was going to be my judgment? And he looked at me, he said, face to face, you don't get it well done. You get it, you bear the meaning. And he stepped back and said, come. And at this point, I was so confused, I'm like, wait, wait, what did he say? That interface of my soul. And I would turn my head, and it would go in slow motion, and the tears would fly from my face. And I looked at God, and I was looking at his, 
his judgment, what, what, what was going to be my judgment? And he looked at me, he said, face to face, you don't get it well done. You get it, you barely made it. And he stepped back and said, come. I don't know what he said. He said, you don't get a well done, you get a, hold on. You don't get a well done, you get a what? I need, I need subtitles. Face of my soul. And I would turn my head, it would go in slow motion. And the tears would fly from my face. And I looked at God and I was looking at his, his judgment. What, what, what was going to be my judgment? And he looked at me, he said, face to face. You don't get it well done. You get it, you barely made it. And he stepped back and said, come. And at this point, I was so confused. I'm like, oh my God. And on his left side of God, heaven would open up. So soft, with brilliant lights. Uh, the colors were indescribable. Like colors I've never seen before in my life. It was so, 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 so pretty, so amazing. And the colors would blossom as they grow, and as they grew, and the heaven would open up so gentle. And I would walk toward that direction, and my hand would go in the portal. And when my hand went through, it got bigger. My arm went through, it got bigger. It was like I was growing into a, a, a mature state of a glorified body. And so my leg went through, like, got bigger. And you can see how big I got on the other side. And, and how my soul was being transformed into a glorified body. And my body would go through it, and the only piece that was left behind was my leg. And right before my last foot got in, um, I woke up. The dream scared me so bad. I was underneath our living room table for hours. I was so terrified. I was terrified to move. I was terrified to do anything because I was afraid it was going to be added to my judgment. Mm. I thought that was the judgment. I, that didn't feel like a dream. I could feel, I could taste, I could tell you how it made me feel. Everything was so alive in the dream. And at that moment, I was asking God, God, why did you give me this dream? He said, because I want you to warn my people that the things you, you saw are the things that shall be. And I didn't realize that what I prayed for and the vow I made before God that he was going to fulfill it. Now he's looking for my aim to be fulfilled. So that's why I'm here talking to you right now. Forgive. Let go. I couldn't describe how many people that allow for, for unforgiveness to grow in them and it, and it caused a bitterness which caused them to do things that they got judged for. That thing caused them not to make it to heaven. I was terrified. It was so many people went to hell. And it, it felt like I was, it felt like I was the first one. Like God was it was thousands among thousands of people in front of me. That is scary to me. So today I encourage you to get it right with God. Get it right with your fellow friends, your enemies. The church hurt that causes you to attack people in silence. Go get it right. Because hell is not worth it. God, God scared me so bad in this dream. But I knew it was for a reason. So today, choose love. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins and my sins. And that he, he, he died but he rose on the third day. Believe that he's the son of God. Read the scripture and apply it to your life. So that when Jesus come back, he don't see your flesh, but he see his word. I encourage you today. Forgive, love, and watch how God changed your life. I thank you for watching. Be blessed. Dang. He said God was sending people to hell so fast. His word was so instant. 
that as soon as he would say depart from me, the people would go and they would like it, it was as if they were getting sucked up into this portal instantly. But then their screams were delayed. I don't know when he was saying that I was thinking about. I was thinking about Genesis, actually. I was thinking about the creation of this earth when God was speaking things and. and creating the word the the he was creating the earth as we see it with his word and how instant it was. I was thinking that when he was talking about how quick people just into the portal of hell as soon as he said it and the screams were delayed. I was literally just listening to um I was at the gym and <clears throat> I was uh reading John 3. Well, actually the whole book of John, but you know, John 3, 16. And I know everyone knows this verse, right? For God, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment. Verse 18. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. Put your faith in Jesus. Put your belief in Jesus. Because the fact of the matter is we've all fallen short of God's glory. We have all fallen short. There's really nothing that we can do in order to make ourselves righteous or to clean ourselves up apart from apart from putting our belief in Jesus Christ put your belief in Jesus Christ accept him into your life as lord and savior but you got to understand what that means when you accept Jesus into your life as lord you have to allow Jesus to be lord of everything not just the things that you want him to be lord of but of everything you have to fully submit to him and you have to allow him to transform you to change you to create in you a clean heart otherwise you're going to get influenced you're going to get contaminated and you're going to be led by this world and you're going to be led by the sinful desires of this world and those things are going to tear you away from God and they're going to corrupt your belief they're going to corrupt your faith it's a crazy video let me know what y'all think in the comments um like this video subscribe if you have not already I appreciate y'all for watching I'm out